WJR. All right, as the confusion, maybe some turmoil occurs in New York, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, he's postponed, uh, for some reason, testimony. The grand jury was supposed to hear uh, yesterday into the Trump so-called hush money investigation, so any potential indictment will be delayed, as well as seems that there even is going to be one. But uh, Trump's biggest threat to his 2024 presidential candidacy might actually be something else. It might not be this, or maybe someone else, I should say, Ron DeSantis. So Don has taken some public shots at Ron, and Ron is now being more outspoken, Kevin, and seems it's almost inevitable that these two Floridians will be the top two GOP presidential candidates to watch. Yeah, it may not be official, Tom, but it's no secret Ron DeSantis is likely running for president. And sitting back and watching Donald Trump surge in the polls, it has to be tough for DeSantis. Uh, you don't want to give Donald Trump uh, too big a head start or too big of a lead. So in this new interview that DeSantis had with Pierce uh, what's Pierce's last name? Morgan. Morgan. Pierce Morgan. Uh, DeSantis explained, quote, I have what it takes to be president and I can beat Joe Biden. He also described Trump's insults as just background noise, saying if I got involved in the undertow, I would not be able to be an effective governor. Joining us now is Dave Dulio, director of the Center for Civic Engagement and political science professor at Oakland University. Hey, Dave. Guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you being here. Is it a disadvantage for DeSantis to not officially be in the race? Because these polls that are taken of those who are in the race, you know, they show Trump at like 70 or 80 percent. It makes it sort of look like Trump is is uncatchable. Well, I think we have to remember that we are a long way away from anything that actually matters in this uh, eventual Republican presidential primary, right? We're not going to have uh, nominating contests, primaries, and caucuses until uh, February of uh, 2024. Uh, Ron DeSantis has plenty of time to uh, make his case to the Republican primary electorate. And I think that everything that he has done thus far and that we'll see in the next even six or eight eight months is is incredibly well planned out, and that they are sticking to uh, sticking to their strategy. And what is that strategy to to be uh, someone who can uh, pull off all of the Trump policy, but also get along with people and not be so bombastic? I think it's even more um, political than that. I, I think he is. Uh, by not directly engaging with the former president, I think DeSantis is frustrating Trump. I think he is uh, making him mad, right? And and we see that in in the fact that that DeSantis is really the only one that that Trump is taking shots at right now. I think it clearly irritates him uh, that that he's got a, a foil uh, right in his own backyard. Yeah, trying to get kind of the upper hand over DeSantis. I think he said, uh, you know, ever since I installed him as governor, <laughs> that was Donald <laughs> Trump's point to that. D- does Trump have the emotional advantage here with Republicans, though? I know he gets emotional. But in terms of loyalty, there, the, the polls seem to bear this out, that, that Trump, no matter what he does, he is going to have this stable base that will, no matter what, stay loyal to him. Do you think that's that's really the case? And is that going to win over uh, in the primary, I, you know, I think that there's no doubt, Tom, that that uh, that the former president has incredibly loyal supporters, and and they are not going to leave him uh, because another Republican comes along, or because uh, of an indictment, or or whatever might happen on the legal front. Um, you know, they th- there are there are Trump supporters who are with him till the end. It, it is a question of in terms of this nominating uh, process that we'll go through in a, in a year or so, whether or not there are enough of those to uh, to, to, to uh, land the, pr- the former president the, the nomination again. And you know, it, it, another thing to remember is that you know the the surveys that are are national in nature are really meaningless when it comes to a, a, a nominating process at the presidential level because you know we're going to go through um uh not a national primary but but this iterative process from state to state to state and and you know the 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 focus of or collection of uh, uh supporters in those individual states will also matter at the end of the day
Yeah. So, you know, both of these candidates, they they have some pretty impressive policy numbers that really bear out the successes of their policies. I mean, we had great unemployment numbers under, under Donald Trump, a strong economy. Uh, for DeSantis' case, he's got a flourishing state since he's become the governor. People have been flocking to them. What will work better for both of these candidates? Is it point, pointing to their own accomplishments or is it trying to point out the failures of the other candidate? I think that depends on, on who you're talking to. I think that there are Republican primary voters who will respond uh, to, to both of those. Uh, and, and I think it is an, in, it's at the individual level, right? What is going to mean more to a particular Republican primary voter uh, depends on that particular individual. So as you look at this thing, uh, I wonder um, if, if these cases against Donald Trump will help or hurt him. At first, you got the Stormy Daniels hush money case, and that seems to help Trump in the polling, as most Americans see that as political prosecution. But if that happens, and then the Georgia interference case happens, and the classified documents case happens, and who knows if any of the other cases will happen, as these things pile up, if Donald Trump is charged in, in, in multiple cases, will this eventually lead voters to, to turn away from him and just have fatigue or or at least independents turn away from him? Well, I think it, it, independents have already turned away from him. And I think that, that it's, um, it's a question of in that Republican primary electorate, in those individual states that, that are going to vote in the early part of 2024, right, how much erosion of, of that Trump support comes uh, from any possible uh, legal action that is taken against the former president. I, I, you know, I, and, and we're not going to know that in, in the next uh, couple of weeks. We're not going to know that in the next couple of months. It's going to be, you know, uh, we'll talk again in December or January, and then we can really assess, you know, sort of what impact any of the, the, the political or legal uh, uh, happenings have had. Yeah, well, you're right. We're not going to know, but we can have some, I guess, indications on certain things. Like, like I'm of the belief that whoever wins the GOP primary, whether it's Trump or DeSantis or maybe somebody else, that that person is going to be vilified in the media. Uh, of of Trump and DeSantis, who do you think has the better temperament to withstand or maybe to weather that kind of criticism? Well, you know, I think we've seen we've seen the former president and and how he handles the the press. Uh, it is. It, it has, was very successful for him during his time in office and his, his both campaigns. I think that he, uh, his Republican base and his, his loyal supporters love it when he takes on the mainstream media. I think you see Santis, uh, try to do some similar things. He does it in, in maybe a kinder, gentler way, maybe even more of a, um, uh, it, it, it's it's maybe uh, passive aggressive, if you will, where he um, it's a it's a, a softer, gentler uh, attack on the press, and 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 that can work as well. I I, I think it depends um, mm -hmm. uh, on the strategy. Yeah, I think he did that the other day when he said, you know, I don't know why he didn't fire Fauci. I would have fired Tony Fauci on day one, essentially, <laughs> and then he moves on. Well, uh, we it, whether or not you think that uh, DeSantis is going to run or not, he is making the rounds across the country. He's going to be in Michigan in Midland County on April the 6th. So DeSantis is coming to Michigan for some reason. It's got to be that he's running. We appreciate your perspective. As always, Dave Dulio, Director of the Center for Civic Engagement and Political Science Professor at Oakland University. Dave, good to talk to you. Thank you. You too, guys. Have a good day. You too. 800-859-0957. Love to hear your thoughts and even your text messages at 800-859-0WJR.